Good morning. You excited to be in God's house or what? Amen. Hallelujah. This morning is our first day of the beginning of Advent, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where this year we're going to preach through Advent. So each heading of each day, like today is hope. And we lit the, we did a virtual candle because of the thing going on and stuff like that. So things are a little bit different this year, okay? But, I, but I, I'll be lighting a candle each time I come up each Sunday. This Sunday is the, is the Sunday of hope. It's interesting. We're going to be looking in the book of Luke this morning. We want to welcome you, first of all, to Southside Baptist Church and into our home church today. And remember this church. Thank you for obeying the, the, the rules of the mask and things because this thing is spiking real bad again. And it's, we're right around the corner from them closing churches down again. Okay, so be very careful with that. I don't want to have to do that. Uh, so look, thank you for adhering to all the, all the requests that we've made of you with the mask and things like that. It's working real well here, and God bless you for that, okay? Um, uh, today we're going to be in some most exciting scripture. We're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 76 through 79, hope. That's our Advent candle today, hope. And this is a really an interesting one. I've got a couple of announcements this morning. Um, the, if you are on a virtual Sunday school class or you just want to have a sun, Sunday school book for winter, uh, they're in the foyer right now. What we have available, they're in the foyer. We've got the, we got the adult books, the adult teachers, the adult students, the youth teacher, the youth students. Uh, we put the Hispanic ones over in the, in the Spanish-speaking department. We've got the uh, college and careers out there. So they're in there on, on the... On the that round table on your left as you exit this morning. Today is the last day, the very last day for you to buy a shoebox online and send it to a child overseas. This is the last day. It won't be available tomorrow, so you have to do it today. And if you need that address of that, if you want to, I can send you a, a little demo flitch on your phone. I don't know what them things are called. I'm not really good at that. Uh, and you just press the button. It'll take you right to Southside Baptist Church's site, and you can order a box right there. If you need that today, text me after church today. Please not during church. And, uh, and I'll get that to you this morning today. <laughs> okay. Or tell me after church. And you notice, everybody, we, we were giving. We did the pins different this year because of the situation also. I don't want to have a crowd at the door. Uh, so if you did not get a pin, if you came in after I gave the pins out, uh, See me at the church, and I will give you a pen for our Christmas pens. These This year, they rock and roll. They're beautiful. God has really blessed us. Amen? Amen. Thank you. I knew you'd love them. Uh, and we want to thank our people, all of our workers and all of our volunteers, for the wonderful Thanksgiving meal you served on Thanksgiving Day. Amen? Amen. Great job. Uh, the, it was really a blessing. I've had calls from people who have been coming to our box handouts on Thursdays, which are not doing that right now, but they came up and got Thanksgiving. They were really appreciative. I've heard from members how good the meal was. So thank y'all very much for the home run y'all hit on that for the Lord Jesus Christ. Good, great service, okay? Now, let me see what else I'm going to do. But first! The only mystery in life is this. Why did, Brother Rodney, I can't figure this out. Why did kamikaze pilots wear helmets? <laughs> okay, and I got one more. Men marry women with the hope that they'll never change. Women marry men with the hope that they can change them. Invariably, they're both disappointed. I'm sorry. The... the Sister Judy's been working on me for 50 years. And they, I know, sweet, I'm working on it. The thought for today is this. Now, understand this. This is very true. In our times, okay, the greatest enemy of humankind is not disease. It's despair. And so today, what we're going to be talking about is hope. Hope. As we stand now... And we read Luke 1, 76 through 79. I've, I've picked several scriptures today because this is, I'll explain it to you as we go. I had to put these two to, these because this is an announcement. This is a prophecy of an announcement. This is, this is some great stuff here that, uh, what's his name? Zacharias, whatever the dude named him, John's dad. Yeah, anyway, I mean, Luke's, yeah, John's dad. Uh, anyway, we'll read it. Anyway. I know I'm on camera. People saying, that's the stupidest preacher I ever saw in my life. He don't know what he's talking about. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. Okay. 
And now, it says, and now, child, in other words, you're, th this child that has just been born is what he's saying here, okay? Shall be called the prophet of the, of the highest. Wow. For thou, this child, shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. To give knowledge of salvation. This is very, a good part right here. You need to really pay attention to this. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of of their sin through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Father God, we thank you for the hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the truth in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the power in that name. We thank you for the salvation that Jesus brought us. We thank you for the eternal life that he gives us through his name. Let us all have hope during this Christmas season. Now, I realize there's a lot of things going on, Lord. And it seems like it's getting, always getting worse, dear Lord. But see, for Christians, it should be getting better. Because we're getting closer to seeing our Heavenly Father in heaven one day, Lord. So let us today here rejoice in the hope that came right through this dad's voice. Talking about his little boy, what his little boy was going to do. That infant was going to announce the coming of the Messiah of the world. Hide me behind the cross today, dear Lord. Forgive me if I've offended you in any way. If there one be here today that needs to have a closer walk with Jesus, let them take that big step today towards the cross of Calvary. Because there's only healing in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, as we start our, our, our Advent time, I've got to make Mickey be quiet because it's okay. As we start our Advent time, uh, let's step back into history and talk about that. This is interesting, and you got to really stick with me to understand this, okay? About the one person that would be blessed of God to have the privilege of announcing the coming of hope. Okay? Are you with me? Now, we're talking here this morning, though. What we just read, which is really cool, okay, about the person who will be announcing another person who will be announcing the coming Messiah. Okay, we're talking third person here, okay? Think with me for a moment. Kind of like, I'm going to tell you about a person who's going to announce something to the world. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to tell them that you're coming to do it, Linda, okay? Kind of like this is what this story is in our Bible today. The coming of the Savior of the world. The great hope for mankind. The coming of Messiah. The Lord and Savior of our sinful souls. Zacharias, daddy of John, okay, is announcing the coming of John the Baptist, his son. Actually, he has just been born, okay? This little dude here. Now, up to this point, this is so really cool stuff, man. You got to realize, oh, this, I just love this, okay? Uh, look with me, morning. I really mean this, how Zacharias, in this joyful song of praise for the remission of sins, and one of the most extraordinary proofs of the tender mercies of our God. This is Zacharias' prophecy concerning his son, John the Baptist. Now, there had been... No prophet in Israel for some 400 years. John was to be the first since Malachi. Christ was called the highest. It was just mentioned in the scriptures. That is, the most high, which is title. This is a title for God. The only hope that will save the world. We have that hope, sisters and brothers. We have that promise. And he lives today in our hearts. And, we, and this is what we, you know, but these little pins, we're going to spread that love to an outside world that's lost and needs Jesus Christ. Thus, the deity, the very incarnation of God in Christ was being proclaimed here and now, right here, okay? John was called the prophet of the highest, of Christ, of God incarnate himself. John was to prepare the Lord's way. He was to be the forerunner of the Messiah, the one who is to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. Now, John was to proclaim salvation 
even the forgiveness of sin. Always remember this. And always remember this. Did I say always remember this, Nancy? Okay, always remember this. Salvation comes through the forgiveness of your sins. Without the forgiveness of your sins, there is no salvation. Remember that. Very important stuff here. That people think they can accept Christ without being sorry for their sins. Ah, it don't work. You got to be sorry for you. You got to confess your sins before God. I don't mean to count every one of them. He knows what they are, but you got to be truly sorry for them. I say, Lord, I am turning them over to you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary to cover my sins up. And I'm accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior through the remission of my sins. Forgive me, for I have sinned against thee, O Lord. This is very strong, what we call doctrinal stuff here, okay? Uh, you know, now, doctrine is a belief that describes what a church or a political party or other group holds as truth, as truth. In this instance, it is a doctrinal belief of our church that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the remission of our sins. And the only way we can go to heaven is through accepting him through confessing our sins to Jesus Christ and accepting him as our Lord and Savior. That is our message. It's very simple. People try to make it difficult. Keep it simple, okay? You must confess your sins to Jesus to be saved. Oh, there's a small addition to that too. I, I just got to add this. Though. Just a teensy thing. You must really mean it. It can't be a joking matter. It can't be a, a, a passing fancy with you and then you go about doing your life like you were before. It doesn't work. Jesus Christ is a life changer. If your life is not changed by Jesus Christ, then you don't know the Jesus Christ that I know. You've got to change. When I accepted Jesus Christ, I ain't saying I'm not the guru, the perfect one, but when I was this old proud boy, policeman, when this proud man got on his knees spiritually before Jesus and said, I am nothing, you are everything, that changed my life. And I've never looked back on it. So, John's purpose, though, was to call sinners to salvation, to forgive their sins. John was to proclaim the coming of God. Remember when Jesus came up over that little hill? And he says, behold, the Lamb of God who cometh to take away the sins of the world. Whoa, that's what his announcement, that's what he was born for. What were you and I born for? What are we here on this earth for? To proclaim the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And anybody, as long as they're still sucking air, that means breathing on nice terms, okay, has the opportunity to accept Jesus and go to heaven like us. Amen? And that's our job. This is, our, this is why we're proclaiming Jesus Christ in this season of COVID and problems and all kinds of upside down, this, that, and the other, and this, every kind of immoral thing going on. But we are to proclaim Jesus' love. But you can't proclaim it until you live it. Christ the Messiah is the day spring. I like that word. The day, it's right there in the scripture. It's the day spring from on high. He's the morning light, the rising sun who has visited us. The word day spring is used here in Luke, kind of like a metaphor for the, for the promised Messiah. He's the one, man. He's going to spring into our lives, man. Woo, he's going to put day in my heart. He's going to change my whole black and heart. He's going to make me clean, wash me as white as snow. He's coming. That's what John was going to say. John was to proclaim the rise of Messiah. Now, you know, an interesting thing, though, I, I want to add this here this morning. Up until that point, remember his daddy doubted that that was going to happen. I'm an old dude, man. How can I have children at this age? And at that moment, he was struck dumb. He couldn't talk. Couldn't talk for his disobedience. Okay. And we'll get to that in just a minute. I want to talk. Remember that he hadn't talked up to this point right here in Scripture when his boy was born. And there's a reason why he was able to talk again. It really it was really cool. The Messiah was be, being sent through the tender mercies of God. See, he was being sent to give light to the darkness. 
to those who sit in darkness. I was sitting in darkness. Every one of us who have accepted Christ here today, you are sitting in darkness, heading for hell. And Jesus put light in there and showed you a new road to go down that was going to lead you to heaven. To those who are in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Zacharias had been, had been dumb. That's the word for he couldn't talk, okay? Not like the pastor. It means a different thing. Anyway, okay. Um, he was unable to speak for a reason. As punishment for what? Unbelief. That happened to him. Therefore, he used his recovering speech to sing of God's pardoning mercy. When John was born, and those way, everybody was family in those towns, okay? Small towns. Everybody, so everybody in the town was there watching. And when he was born, everybody told, because see, Zacharias wasn't talking. So they told his mama, name him Zacharias. He's going to be a cause junior, junior, okay? Right, going to be a junior. <laughs> cool, we got junior coming on, okay? Anyway, and then, and then the wife says, no, his name's going to be John. Oh. Who do you think you are? You're just a chick. Remember, ladies didn't have a whole lot of rights in those days. But let's go to daddy. Let's go to the, to the man who's going to make the decision on this. Now, they went to the disobedient, non-talking daddy. And they says, they made a sign. Who does, tell us, brother, what this kid's name is going to be. We know it's going to be Zacharias. He takes a piece of paper and he writes, his name is John. And that instant, sister, that instant, he got his voice back. Why? Because he obeyed in faith his Lord and his Savior. Amen? He got, hey, hallelujah. Isn't that the coolest thing? That's, that's when he first got it. So now he's filled with the Holy Spirit because he's all excited. Man, man, look at my voices back. So what I want to proclaim is who gave me this voice back? And look at his first words. Man, therefore, he used his recovering speech to sing of God's great pardoning mercy. And if, well, no, no, no matter how much of a stinker you have been, God can pardon you today. His mercy can stretch right through your heart and clean you up right now, today. No salvation is possible. Remember what I said, without forgiveness. And so Zacharias says, and this is, this is right out of Zacharias talking about his boy. Here says, He's, in verse 77, he says, to give knowledge of salvation. My son's going to give knowledge of salvation of the soul. I don't know why I walked over there. It would look cool. <laughs> Unto his people. And by the way, now we're the Gentiles. Now we are his people. Okay. By the remission of their sins. There it is in black and white. Through the remission of our sins. We will have knowledge of salvation through giving Jesus our sin. Wow. Now he's talking about John, his son, that will preach of salvation through the remission of sins. And that the one that John will be pointing to will be Messiah. So he's talking about his son who's going to talk about the Messiah. This is really cool stuff, man. So we're looking at a prophecy. And Jesus fulfilled every prophecy of the Bible. That's amazing. Well, again, let me tell you this morning, in case I haven't already, that there's no salvation without the forgiveness of sins. So many churches today are preaching that you can have Jesus by saying, I love you, Jesus, and you don't have, you can go right back into your lifestyle. I don't want to change anything. We just want you to come to this church. We don't care what kind of, we just want you to be here because we're all about love. You want the love of Jesus Christ, you better change your life. I don't feel a whole lot of churches there, but that's the truth of God. And we better be preaching the truth because it'll set us free. So here this morning, I want to any person here that is burdened with, with sin to absolutely today believe in the forgiveness of your sins through Jesus Christ. And to believe it because God is love. Next week we want to talk about love. And as a great tenderness you know, he's got a great tenderness towards everybody in this room. He's got a great tenderness to everybody you come in contact with. 
He's got a great tenderness to all your no good knuckle headed family. That won't listen to you. That thinks you're ridiculous. You're one of them holier than thou. Stay that way. Don't change. Be more for Jesus all the time. Every day of your life. The hardest core. Send them scriptures. Text them. They cut you off. That's their problem. You know something? I send scriptures to all. all a bunch of my heathen relatives. And if you're watching today, you don't know who I'm talking about, but you figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but they've been very cordial. They, 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 let me t they very rarely ever answer me back. But I don't care about that. I want them to answer to God. So send them scriptures that will prick their hearts. Get out there. Hey, there's a great way of doing it. You say, I hear people say, they, oh, texting is so uncool. Man, I sent out 350 texts last night. Last night, 350 of them. Sister Judy and I were sitting in there, and, and we saw with her, she was reading me an article about how COVID is already up. How many thousands is it just yesterday? It's ravaging our city again. And it's really bad. I'm concerned about it. You can call it a lie, but I call it a disease. We better be very careful. And, and I says, honey, and she said, more, this is scary, more than the disease, people are dying from suicide because of the situation going on in our country today. People are totally in despair about a lot of things going on. And you know what I'm talking about. A lot of things. Not only with the COVID, with the government, with our cities, with our schools, with our families, everything. We are the ones who need to hold our chest out and hold our stand up straight, like Judy tells me every day. Keep your stand up straight, boy. Every, I love you so much, man. Just, can I take you to lunch after church? And proclaim the love of Jesus through your life. Be joyful. Show hope. Don't go up to the counter with somebody and be as down as they are when they're checking you out. You be up. How's your day? Man, my day's been great. Great. I got the Lord in my heart, man. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Right? Amen. Is it going to stay there? Or just because something goes wrong, it's going to go out of your heart? We ought to be a staying church. I just almost tripped, sister. I'm not, I'm not really one of them cool TV preachers, okay? I'm not really, I make mistakes. I trip everywhere. I spit all over the place. That's why you don't sit in front of poor Nancy over. But God is here this morning. Did you know that? I feel him in our presence. I started feeling him when the, when the praise team started, started singing. Sister Ruth and, and Betsy, thank you. Sister Ruth, you did a great job this morning on that. That was really sweet. Man, she looked good in that red dress, too. Didn't she look so sweet up there? With the blue earrings. I noticed, sister. And the blue shoes to match. But once again, we need to let Jesus fill us with the joy of our salvation. I often say, don't let go of the joy of the very second you accepted Jesus in your heart. That is the most, absolutely, in my life, over everything in my entire life that's happened, that was the most exciting moment of my life. When I totally felt Free for the first time in my life. And knew beyond all reasonable doubt that I was going to heaven. And I want to live that joy every day of my life. And when Satan comes a knocking, you tell Jesus to answer it for you. God is not here to condemn anybody. On the contrary, he looks with anxious care on them to see how he can, he can turn them away from the wrath of this world and restore them to his favor. See, God wants us to get back to the Adam and Eve days where we had just innocent love for Jesus Christ, child love for Jesus Christ. For this reason alone, this is the, for the remission of sins. He wants to forgive you today. 
Forgiveness comes not to us through any virtue of ours. But only through, verse 78, the tender mercy of God. Isn't that purdy? If he is gracious enough to forgive our sins, it will be done. God has already taken care of the plan to take care of our sinful soul. Don't carry the burden of what you did even yesterday. If it's something that you did, you felt that wasn't pleasing to God, let go of it today. Give it to God. Give it to him. Confess it to him. You, can just, you don't even have to verbally say it, just in your heart and go out of here a free person again. Satan wants to hold you back from being a witness for Jesus Christ. He can't get your soul anymore if you're saved, but he can shut your mouth. He can tear your witness up. So live that salvation moment and be excited about it. Give that checker behind the thing that's already put a whole bunch of hours in there, heard every complaint in the world from everybody in front of you, and is fixing to hear it from everybody behind you because they already run out of that dollar ninety nine poinsettia. They ain't got no more. What's the matter with you? You ain't stock no more. You put it for advertising. I demand one. You go up and say, "That's no problem." I'm excited anyway. I'm just excited to see you smiling today. I'm excited that you're here. Thank you for, have you thought, are you thanking everyone? I thank the FedEx dudes that is at my house at least six days a week. The, the, the UPS guys is just in front of him. And the Amazon guys that comes just after them. There's a line every day. My sister Judy can do some ordering. <laughs> but boy, I'll tell you, and it, sorry, forget it. But I thank them. When I come up, I want to get out there. And I tell them, thank you for your service. God bless you. Instead of, you didn't put it in the right place last time. What's the matter with you? You guys don't know nothing. What's the matter with you? I can't stand your service. Christians ought not to do that. Find something good and run with it. Give them some hope that somebody in this life is happy in Jesus Christ. I don't know how I'm going to do the second service. I'm already wore out the first one. So I, th I think the main point this morning, the main point, is we need to remember this. And this is what we need to pass on to everybody this Christmas season, is through the tender mercies of God, you can go to heaven. You can be forgiven. God sent his son so that we can be set free. And this is what... Zacharias is announcing, my boy's going to tell you about that. See, to me, these words glow with a sympathetic light. I'm going to have sympathy on you, no good sinner, that deserves to go to hell because you've sinned against me, the awesome God, who cannot allow sin into my heaven. No sin's going to come in. I'll never, and, and, and you have no way of forgiving your own sin. You can be the best person in the world. You can be the best person in your job. You can be the richest person in the world. You can be the brokest person in the world, which some of us are towards Christmas. And that ain't going to get you into heaven. You don't have that blood on you, like on the man on the doorpost in Egypt when they destroyed the firstborn. God says, I will pass over you. I will pass over and nothing will be injured in your house. When he sees you, that blood of Jesus will be passed over your forehead. And he says, I'll pass over your sin. Come unto me, thy good and faithful servant. You've accepted my son. I, I'm letting you in because of Jesus, not because of you. There's a song in my heart, well, that I, that I love so very much. But I'm not going to sing it this morning. But I just want to sing about all the day. I want to sing about the tender mercy of God. It should be exceptionally sweet to our hearts. No matter what you're going through in life. And I can tell you some stories about people in our congregation that's really, really suffering right now. Some of them are very, very bad. And I get strength when I visit them or when I talk to them. Because see, through their pain, they're serving the Lord. They're trying to find ways to be happy in the Lord. And I guarantee you, we got some, you know, we got some, and there's some people right here in our midst right now that is very sick right now. We want God to bless you very much. 
And I don't know why. Next week, I'll tell you the story of the poinsettia. Don't let me forget that. Remind me of that what you said, Sharon, next Sunday. You really want to hear that. But that's going to be with love, the love of God. But no matter what you're going through today, God's ready to give his tender mercies to you right now. If you're unhappy, if you're hopeless, these words are life to a dead heart. As a lost sinner many years ago, it was the tender mercies of God that brought peace to my troubled heart. I pray I hear those words every day of my life. If I can share the peace that passes all understanding. God's tender mercy. If you think this is uh, of, this, of this tenderness in connection with God, it'll strike you with wonder. For an instant, it'll just really make you excited that one so great could be so tender to you. He that is genuinely great among us is very tender because he is great hearted as to welcome us into heaven through his son. And a truly great spirit is always gentle. And because God is so infinitely great, he is therefore infinitely tender to us now this morning we're not going to be long let's round third and go home here okay i think we need to, to take these scriptures to heart and meditate on them zacharias had the awesome privilege to announce the prophet that would soon come and that prophet his son john would have the awesome privilege to announce the coming messiah jesus the christ and remember, through all this, God showed his tender mercy. It's in the scripture there. I love it. Well, the Bible is so great. In fact, that prophecy of John came true. He talked about the coming Messiah. He introduced. How would you like that awesome, awesome gift of God to be able to announce Jesus Christ into the world? Wow. Wow. And you know what happened to John for his faith? You can get in trouble. One of these days, it may be illegal in this country to worship Jesus Christ. I feel it's probably coming. Maybe not in our generation. Maybe not even our kids' generation. But each generation, you see our country getting farther and farther away from God. And laws are being passed all the time that are trying to shut God's people up. Watch out, they're coming after the Bibles next. There are people already calling the Bible racist. They're trying to, they're trying to pick things out and so they can do away with the whole thing. I don't want, I'm not taking one page out of that. Not one verse. You see in John 8, 31 and 32, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. How about those Christians in Southside Baptist Church who believed on him? Put your name in there. If you continue in my word, here it is, then are ye my disciples indeed. Oh, I love that. And here it is. And here's, here's the killer. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I will set free, amen, through the truth. Hallelujah. Now, also, if you're sitting here this morning, you're telling yourself, well, I know all this already. I ask you, please pay attention to some of the last words of Peter before he was executed upside down on a cross. See, when he went, to, when they were executing him, they were going to put him on a cross like Jesus. He says, no, I don't deserve to die like my Savior. So they, he said, put me upside down. He died upside down. How'd you like to die? That's horrible. Have you ever tried to stand on your head or hang from your head? How long were all that blood coming down to your head and everything? He died that way. Because he would not recount his faith in Jesus Christ. First, 2 Peter 1, 12 and 13. Peter's saying this. This is just before he died. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. In other words, I will never shut up while I'm alive to tell you about the graces of Jesus Christ. I will repeat it, and I will repeat it, and I will repeat it, and I will repeat it. I will never stop. 
That's some strong stuff here, okay? Though you know them, even if you know them all, I'm still going to tell you. And you may be established in the present truth. Don't make any difference. I'm still going to remind you. Yea, I think it meet. I think it's very important. As long as I am in this tabernacle, as long as I'm still alive in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. We are to tell each other. We are, we are to remind each other of the love of Jesus, of the mercies of God all the time. We need to lift each other up. There's people in here that are hurting this morning. We need to pray for each other. We need to love each other. Lest we forget. And please, please, please hand it down to the children. Hand it down. Live Jesus in front of the children. Quote scriptures and pray with the children. Tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell the children. Because I guarantee you, most of their parents today, I'm talking about our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, are not telling them. They're not telling them. They want them to find them their own self and their own way. If you leave, let your children go their own way to find their self, every one of them is going to probably go to hell. But the world's going to rip them a new one. Set the boundary. Set the cement while they're young. And with that, Luke, 7, Luke 1, 76 through 79. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the Most High. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. With that, first, everyone is a sinner and separated from God. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, death means separation forever from God. Eternal life comes through trusting Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Next, God loves us all so much that he gave his son to die for our sins. Romans 5, 8. But God commended, he showed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In order to begin your new life in Christ, you must be saved. You must believe that Jesus died for your sins and declare that you accept him as Savior. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And this is God's promise to you if you accept, he would accept you. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father God, we come to you this morning. We love you, Lord. We love talking about you. We love your services, Lord. We love being together as a family. But help us there, Lord, during this Christmas time. Go out and spread the word of hope to a lost and dying world. That just means maybe a kind word. That may be an invitation to come to church with me. Just letting them know that you love Jesus. And maybe, is there something I can pray for you? How can I pray for you today? Oh, dear Lord, let's blow their socks off. Dear Lord, just showing a little Jesus in our lives. And if there's one here today, dear Lord, that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, let this be the day that they're set free, dear Lord. And they say yes to Jesus, believing that Jesus was born of a virgin. And that Jesus never committed one sin in his life. He was the perfect Lamb of God who came away to take away the sins of the world. And that Jesus died for my sins. Lord, I'm confessing my sins to you right now in my heart. Take them from me, dear Lord. I confess I, I'm trusting you as my Lord and my Savior. I want to I want to live my life down your path and not Satan's path anymore. I'm tired of living the way I've been living, though. I want to change my life. And only you can change me. And Lord... I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, dear Lord, and that you rose again on the third day to give me eternal life. Thank you for that gift of eternal life. Thank you for your tender mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. What's on your heart this morning?